Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie, I never have a pen that works ever. It's unbelievable. You want this one? Should I yes, thank one? you. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Happy birthday. Hello. Oh, it's over. That was yesterday. I've moved on. <laughs> Uh, I left my credit card at a place, and so I had to call the credit card company, and the woman sang me happy birthday. Oh. She was like, it's early, and I was like, somebody's bored over at Chase. <laughs> and, uh, oh, wow, her. that's nice. Sure. So much drama, so much drama in comedy this week. Where's yeah. my where's my list of, of drama? I had a list of things that I wrote down that were very dramatic. Well, let's just start with a shooting at the Comedy Zone in You've Charlotte. You've been calling it. You've that been calling it. Is incredible. Right. It was uh <sighs> you know, the headliner wasn't up. Don't all we're saying is don't shoot the headliners. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, yeah, so it was the guy came into the comedy club and they did not say it was a guy. I'm going to say it was a guy. I, they, I saw the word gunman used a lot, and I'm going to assume it was a man. A gunman. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. The, so, Craig Robinson, that my whole thing was who was headlining? And uh, be, that's mm -hmm. how jaded we've become about shootings. Literally, all I could think was, what club is that? and who's who's headlining and not even in a joking way that was literally where i was i was like and it was craig robinson who i guess did a live instagram right after it happened when they moved everybody okay and um and there was so there was no one in the building so the guy the gunman waved the gun around evacuated everyone and then shot up the place oh really yeah that's what i read in the yahoo article Fuck. yahoo um, well, Craig Robinson is not a political act at all. He is no. a party. So that's, yeah, that dude's a party. It also feels uh, that might be more, I mean, not to separate, you know, our, our gunmen's, but that might be, it seemed like more of a party gun as opposed to a mass shooter with an AR-15. You know what I mean? Pardon me while I write down the words party gun. Yeah. <laughs> I believe um, we have a title for <laughs> the show at tw two minutes into the damn thing. Well, yeah. Well, um, my my fear is always like some uh, some male incel with an AR-15 is going to go after a female comic for telling abortion jokes. You know, that's right. That's right. So this seems like a different sort of vibe. But yeah. but, th but that was before you told me they the person went back in and shot up the club afterwards. Now that's insanity. So you know what? I don't even know what's happening. And and I've become so immune to this as an American. I'm not worried about one kind of shooting and am worried about another kind of shooting when they all end up with bullets in your body. Right, right. This doesn't feel like freedom. No. Uh, I don't I don't feel super free. <laughs> so no. um, but I will say that um that that I think I, oh, I was essentially, I got distracted when you said abortion joke, because I have a new abortion joke that doesn't have enough punchlines. <laughs> and um, so I'm still mad when I go into the next bit, which ruins the next bit. It needs two more punchlines. So okay. I think, but if I, if I have two more tags on it, then I'll get, um, I'll be calmed down enough. Yeah. Right to, now, because uh, your hair is messy, joke. you, you absolutely look insane. <laughs> my hair is messy yeah it's because of these headphones and uh i just got a haircut which is good but it's 95 degrees in my garage so oh my god I'm just sort of well you know chase roper who's a seattle comic said yeah. there was a shooting um like one block in front of him in downtown seattle uh just a shooting just like one shot at a car and the cops were called and no one came and oh, the cops uh, didn't come yeah. Cops and show he said within five minutes, it was as if nothing had happened. You wouldn't have known there was a shooting if you had you had you just arrived there five minutes later, right near, you know, it like you yeah. and third, which is sort of near the old comedy underground. It's just it's just like, uh, I don't know. It's so distressing. It's distressing. Um, yeah, I don't know how to how to fix it. No, every, but, uh, everything is so overwhelming. And then, uh, you know, yeah, I, I just follow one, one, uh, one climate scientist and I just want to, you know, crawl into a grave. <laughs> that's your old tweet. That's okay. You know? Well, so somebody retweeted my, a, a bit from my hero album. So not yeah. staycation, but 
but hero. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's the, it's got my hope where I, and and it, cause it came out right after 2016 election. Yeah. And, um, so the got got my hope bit says in it something like, I believe that 2% of the people on the planet are bad. 98% of the people are trying, right. Are trying to be. Yeah. 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 And some guy was like, 2%. 2%. And I said, dude, 2%. In 1930, there were 2 billion people on this planet. In 1974, there were 4 billion people on this planet. There are currently 8 billion people on this planet. So 2% of 8 billion is more people than when your grandfather was a boy and life seems simpler mm-hmm. because 2% of 2 billion is 40 million. Did you, that's you did that math? Is that correct? That math is correct. I did wow. the math for that the tweet. That is a lot of bad people. It's a for lot of tweet? bad people <laughs> for the tweet. I did the math for the tweet. It was 40 million. That's very uh, courteous of you, Jackie. I know. <laughs> I've, I've also just been doing some blocking. I was like, <laughs> if, if, you, if I have to explain satire to you right now, I'm tie tie. You're making right, me right. too tired. So um, other drama. Last night, Maria Bamford in New Hampshire. She called me today. Uh, she... She was a little bit late for the gig. She was driving around. She, she, there was some trouble. So she gets there. She goes on stage. There's some people in the front row. And she said it was super wealthy. And they didn't know why they had come. These people in the front row, these whitey magoos in the front row. And um, she was like, you know, you guys don't have to stay. And um, were, were they heckling her? They were talking amongst, they were like, the Trinity so like just she chatting. was a band. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. They were just talking like she, they were, she was a band. And she's at a club or a party. I'm sorry. Theater. Theater. Oh, theater. Oh, oh. So they deliberately had to show up. It's not like the, it, she sprang up at them at a wedding or something. Right. 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 This wasn't a wow. corporate. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so she's 30 minutes into her set and she goes up to talk to him again from the stage. Right. Yeah. And she's like, how are you guys doing? And, uh, are you guys okay? And, the woman goes, are you okay? Wow. And Maria fell off the stage on top of her. <gasps> She's okay, by the way. Maria's okay. I, as I'm laughing, I was I'm like, like wait, is... is she okay? Why am I laughing? She's okay. But I'm so sorry. I, but I my like, image is of way. her flying on a heckler and just jumping on them like she's the Iron Sheik or something. Oh, no, my God. You know, I love it. Because, you know, she has, she has a bit of a tremor. Yes. So she's a little tippy anyway. Right. And so she got a little too close to the edge and took a header. And she said, luckily they caught her. And that was wow. halfway in the middle of her set. She got back on stage and finished her set. Oh, Jackie, you got to. You got to. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is well, incredible. I'm glad she's okay. Even, yep. And I encourage all comedians to jump on their hecklers. There's <laughs> enough of this fucking banter. We can't trust the staff to protect us. Jump on them. Jump on them. That isn't even the weirdest story. Okay. That I have from stand-up comedy this week. A couple oh, things this happened. This week even. Okay. All right. More. Yeah. More, more, more. Uh, we can talk about the lawsuit, the Spoken Giants lawsuit. Oh, right. I was yeah. explaining that to my son. He uh, takes our side, feels we're being ripped. Oh, up. well, good for him. Yes. Uh, good for us eventually. It could be anywhere between two and 10 years from now. Anyway, that this all gets resolved. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it was just going to be negotiation. And then the dead estates of Robin Williams. This is all public knowledge. So I'm not, I'm not, yeah. you know, Robin Williams, George Carlin. I think Rain Pryor, so uh, Richard Pryor, and then Nick DiPaolo, and a couple other, maybe Bert Kreischer? No, no. Uh, but Nick DiPaolo for sure. There's six comics. Uh, four of them, I believe, are dead. Okay. And, uh, but they are suing. They decided to want us, they wanted to speed up this idea. The idea is this um, Spoken Giants and this other thing, not called Wordle, but I'm calling them Wordle. Okay. And that's the six comics. Um, they want stand up comedy to be paid on streaming and on radio like songs. Yes. Where there's. As it uh, should be. Right. Right now, it is paid as, uh, as the person who writes and performs the joke and then the publisher, the, the label, essentially. Those, yeah. So there's two checks that come for every track. 
right, right, right. They want their in in music. There's three. There's the publisher. There's the writer of the song, and there's the singer of the song, the performer. So if it were stand up, it would be the publisher of the album, the album publisher, the comic who wrote the joke, and then the comic who performed the joke. Who are always um, the same person, almost right. always. It could lead to covers, though. That's interesting, but let me- How weird it, is that? But we should finish the initial thing of it. Is, so Which, is it going to take money from the the publisher? For, no, no, it does so not. That, and Spotify agrees, by the way. Uh, Spotify and Pandora and SiriusXM all agree that there should be three payments on that, but they believe that 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 album, that the- the album people the publishers yeah the the yeah the labels the, the, the labels, labels sorry. have already <laughs> right right have yeah. already tacitly given that approval for the last 30 years that there was some tacit that 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 that, that was already approval of included. what that was that that money was already included in those two payments okay so but, writing. but it almost seems like that's correct so say it's it's ten dollars per clip right if it's a song it's 333 per three checks for three dollars and 33 cents right if it's a uh, comedy it's two checks for five dollars so we're supposed to get six dollars and uh, the the record label is supposed to get four so actually if you what you're saying is correct that extra percentage should be coming from the record label, the money that the, they've already taken. That's and, interesting. Is that unless true? I don't know? I'm just going by what you're saying. Unless that that middle third amount of money is is just sitting in someone else's bank account. Does Spotify That's exactly have it? Does what Pandora it is. have it? Okay. All right. Supposedly they have it. And okay. Um, okay. So there's the six people that decided to sue moments later. We're talking one day later, Spotify took all of its comedy almost entirely off the platform. Um, Pandora relatively quickly followed. Sirius XM is owned by Pandora. So they are also removing standup. Sirius is? Yeah. But Sirius pays, pays us well. Right. But they don't pay the three checks. They pay the two checks. Oh, and um, yeah. So what has to happen is that so that now this is going to go to court. And so there's some fancy pants copyright lawyer that the six have hired. Yeah. A guy named Richard Rush, maybe. Okay. And I'm told that he's the fanciest copyright lawyer in the world. So he's guaranteed to win. And you're like, is he? Anyway, guess how <laughs> interested Jackie Cation is in having anything to do with lawyers right now. <laughs> Correct. I, I don't not, know how much you could tell, but uh, we'd love to hear it one day. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> uh, so I got my eyes are big. Anyway, they, are. So, uh, <laughs> they did get big. You got a lot of you got a lot of looks today, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, I got a haircut, but my headphones are making it all sweaty and gross. And then, yeah. um, so but the so here's so then the Wordle people, the comedians which are the, the 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 a different pile of comics. Okay spearheaded by lewis black oh yeah that's why that's what i meant yeah. yeah so lewis black and maybe other comics from 800 pound gorilla oh this is different from the nick DiPaolo uh from George the nick Carlin. DiPaolo, George okay, Carlin okay. one okay but lewis black also has this guy richard rush so okay. whatever so it's it sound, is, it's sounding like a class action suit. It's, it's and, but it isn't. It's action. all very individual so far. And okay. the weird thing about it is that it's going to take, you know, it'll go, it'll go, uh, everybody who's supposed, this is what I was told. If you're in on the lawsuit, you'll get back money. And I'm I was with told, Spoken Giants. Are you? Yes. Okay. And we can leave Spoken Giants. I, my phone blew up with comics telling me they were leaving spoken giants why uh because they don't want to be as associated with it and they want to get a piece of paper that they can send off to sirius xm saying we're not going to be part of the lawsuit please play, play my shit oh is that what is that what they're, the streamers are saying if you aren't part of the lawsuit we'll start playing you again are they saying no, that? that's the hope that's the hope of of of, of this of these two people who uh who, te that, who texted me i see that but that seems like um that seems that's illegal. living on a dream well living on a dream don't know if it's going to happen all i know is that if you're not in on this sort of lewis black spoken giants thing yeah i don't think you get the back money you get the money going forward so well that like doesn't make any sense either if they owe you money then it's it's and it's found that they owe. well if it's a, if it's a settlement 
because it's not a class action suit. It'll be a settlement. It'll be mm-hmm. a mediated settlement. Remember the Judy Carter book? Yeah. Where she was quoting stand-up comics and not and crediting people, but not giving anybody any money. Oh, I didn't know she was doing that. Oh, so it was, people were like, you're in a book. And I'm like, am I? That's disappointing. Because <laughs> uh, I wrote that joke and I'm not getting any cash. Well, Kathleen Madigan, Jay Leno, and a bunch of comics sued Judy Carter. She, really? had to take, yeah, she had to take the book down and pay those people who sued, but not any of the rest of us. Oh. So, <sighs> right. And so also in the, I, I would like a letter from my mom saying uh, we won't, is that guy. So what do you mean? I would like a letter from my mom uh, saying to, to Sirius XM saying, we promise not to sue you. Please play my shit. Oh, so those right. are the three names that I have handy. And yeah. um, so, but here's the thing. So I've, I'm told that if I take part in this, in this suit, that I might get as much as $2 million, except for the fact that one would imagine it would be all five of my albums that have ever spun in you know in in the past i don't think i that third of that money i don't think it would uh, amount to two million dollars it might amount to a couple hundred grand which i wouldn't kick out of bed three cookies what sure but wouldn't you already have had a hundred a couple hundred thousand dollars i mean yeah okay have you no okay so i i don't know that why if if it's only a third more money then you already would have received a third of that sum that sum right. anyway you it would, would have be received something close to that sum already right and so it should be the matching amount of money is what i would assume i would get if they were doing the math from everything yeah. of mine that is played right so i don't know how that could ever equal two billion dollars yeah. so it's weird so who there's a lot that? of who told you um, that? lawyers really they tabulated or are they saying comedians in general, general, all of us to, well, I know, but I, I, I believe they're when, making it up. I believe the numbers okay. are arbitrary Okay, because, um, this person was told this much, uh, what the fuck? Whoa. Yeah. But this wow. person also makes this amount of money per year from serious spins, which is why they want out. See, uh, that's incredible. That's a right. lot of money from Sirius. Yeah. Uh, does, is, is that, have, has your uh, sound exchange been pretty not exciting lately? Yeah. Mine hasn't been. And for having a new album out, it's really not good. And so can we attribute some of it to that? That uh, Supposedly not. Because so, this is months, this is, you know, because sound exchange is two or three months out. Right. But I was told Ugh. by the Spoken Giant people that if you quit Spoken Giant and then when they eventually win two to 10 years from now, they'll be just like Sound Exchange where we'll just have to join them again. And you're like, well, oh. we can all join them again. We can all, I mean, at this point, I'm just, I don't have the, the Lewis, this is going to shock you, but Lewis Black's lawyer isn't looking for me to join that lawsuit. Mm-hmm. He's looking for names. Right. And as popular as I am, I am not a name. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my second crazy stand-up comedy story. Um yeah. Well I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't I feel like I don't get much uh from sound exchange. Uh I don't know what the deal is. Most of my most of my sound exchange money is still from 45 jokes about my dead dad. Mm-hmm. Very little is from Corset. I'm like, why did I put this album out? I don't get it. I've received well, almost nothing. I haven't even. This is your second even, album. How many albums do you have? Third. But this is, I haven't made enough to even pay for how much it costs me to make it. Mm-hmm. it, it it's like, oh, why? What was the point of it? Because eventually, because that's what I was making. Wow. When I was doing Hero, after Hero. Wow. So it's gone down to about this uh a month which is about half that wow i mean that's yeah i'm on and so and i have five five albums right so that's why i was making a pretty good almost that's half of mine and andy's nut wow so so that sucks that we're frugal too so yeah 
I don't know what to tell you. I mean, uh, it's not much of my nut, as they say, Jackie, as you say, as is said. <laughs> so I, I'm it's not like- as devastated, but but when I see others nuts, I want some <laughs> of them nuts. I want them nuts. I say nuts to you. <laughs> so, um, well, that's a nice, cute little way to end that. That was a very dry bar way to end that segment. <laughs> <laughs> nuts to you, Jackie. <laughs> everything's uh, kid friendly i oh, did i well you have another story but you rest oh i'm You're gonna rest very agitated Just, i am a little bit yes i was up in the bay area this weekend i drove down this morning with my son the kids yes well you, you know what it was it all we had to do was not mention sex or swear so oh. I could, there was a lot of stuff I was able, and then Joe close up went up, up in front of me and was talking about abortion. I'm like, oh, I'm good then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know yeah. whatever. Um, but it's so funny. Cause like, um, there were some like older comics from back in the day, you know, not everyone always was that, but yeah. And, uh, I, I was the riffing, some of the riffing was very, of the early 2000s, that kind of ironic sexism, racism that worked at the time and kind of feels just like old. And I don't know, I was just, I was listening to it going, oh yeah, I remember this was constant. This was nonstop. I was at the Comedy and Magic Club. So that's exactly, Rick Overton. Oh, really? Did a, yeah, did a bit about, um, it was, oh, it was about the chicken ranch. That's right. He did no, the uh, bunny ranch, not the, the chicken ranch. ranch. Whatever. But it's it was Jackie, for God's sake. house outside of Vegas. It's My a sex of, worker building a location where they perform their jobs, Jackie. I'm also from the early 2000s. So I call it a whorehouse <laughs> outside of Vegas. But it is, a, it is a place of business for sex workers outside of Las Vegas. It was, it's and, closed now. And let me tell you something. Um, Rick Overton didn't call it a place of business for sex workers either. <laughs> well, it was just, there was just one line that made me go, yeah, I remember, I remember this, like a woman was speaking and I didn't, rec- I didn't know who it was. I didn't know if it was a comic. I didn't know. And I said, I'm like, who's that? And someone goes, that's the mayor. And, uh, and then the, the comic goes, yes, Lori, women can be mayors now. And I oh, read, that was like the riffing. Yeah, it was, it was more like, I, I, I could, it was, you know, that ironic sort of, yes, women are funny, you know, yeah, that kind of yeah. thing. Where even now when you're trying to make fun of Christian relations, it's like, no, just that's Wrap 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but there could, maybe there's like 10 layers in of reverse irony where you're making fun of making fun of, like, I didn't know what was happening. I just, I just <laughs> was surrounded at one point riffs where I was like, this shit feels so old you know, and yeah. it was interesting. That's all, mm. you know. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, that was every um, bunch of, you know, there were essentially a lot of comics our age and older at the Comedy of Magic, a lot of yeah. dudes, and they yeah. were all talking about uh, abortion. And as soon as it came up, I would literally be like, if they're a nightmare, don't charge the stage. Don't tackle them. Don't don't get all in their face. And uh, to a person, they were all the jokes were all pretty mediocre, but pro-abortion. Right, pro-choice. right, right. So, um, I was pleased. You know, here's <laughs> in the eleventh hour. Yes, so. we female comics have been talking about this for 20, 30 years. So a lot of you guys are new to thinking about it and joking about it. And so maybe your first 10 jokes you think of, you gotta know they've probably been done. Right, Okay. check some IP, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, just like dig a little deeper with your irony and your support, you know? Yeah. Um, that's all, because we've been doing it for a really long time. And now, you know, uh, the the barn doors are open and you are allowed to, I guess, and uh, and people don't yep. feel like you're virtue signaling or something. I mean, you know, everyone should be talking about it, but uh, you know, just know that there are many have come before you and done a better job of it. Yep. Um, I, but I just remembered another stand up comedy. So I got a call this week from a guy I went to high school with that 
of the six people I remember from high school. He's one of them. And uh, he's a really yes. nice guy. He's a good egg. Uh, and he's organizing our high school reunion, which is going to be oh, in the summer fun. of 23. Yes. Are you going to go? And, well, he wants to know if I wanted to perform. No. Right. And I said, is there a is there a more specific way I could make our high school reunion just about me? Is there just <laughs> a way that I could be hated more by the people I went to high school with? And he was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. And I was like, yeah. I was like, he said, well, we want to do something entertainment wise. And I said, here's what you could do if you're if you want to do a stand up comedy show. There is my high school has uh, like a theater, a performing arts center attached, a brand new one yeah. that I performed at probably five or six years ago. And I performed there with Tom Clark and Mary Mack, who were other Wisconsin comics and a, a magician from Madison that this woman I went to high school with, who's the cur- the curator. She booked the magician. And my cousin, John, was like, that was the only person I liked, the magician. And I said, oh John, God, you're 90. Course. And he goes, well, I didn't have my hearing aids on. <laughs> I said, it was a comedy show, John. Anyway, so um, the, the deal is that I said, if it's a benefit, I will help you put that up, you know, and then it could benefit like the food pantry or the local or, or for the high school, it could be like the, the music and theater department. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I told her, told him that I would do that. And he was like, well, maybe we could do that. And I was hoping, whoa, I was hoping that it would be with uh, Mary Mack and Tim Harmston and maybe Tom Clark. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, no one's approached me for my uh, reunion next year. And uh, I don't think they will. Uh, we took Catholic school. So I think there's a little, a bit of a hands-off <laughs> situation from the nuns, the officials at my Catholic school uh but do you have uh, any do you have any friends from high school left i do in fact one of my friends alexis malik uh has this incredibly cool farm in vacaville called soul food farm and she's had it for like i don't know 10 or 15 years she lived in denmark for a little while with her husband and uh she's uh, amazing um and they 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 have like organic uh uh, oh cool it's sales, like an organic uh, yeah organic farm and it's it's incredible and I, I i went there once for um a friend's i forget it was like a party and there's a lot of high school <laughs> there's a lot of high school friends there and the guy i went to my prom with was like i'm gonna try he's like i tried stand up i'm like he just started i'm like oh no no, no. what are you doing no. did you see deborah <laughs> di giovanni's tweet today no she said I... one of the things she likes about her husband her boyfriend is that he's nobody has ever told him that he should do stand up oh yes exactly She's, i think i did see that and, one and i yeah. think she said something like he's a five or somebody's a, somebody i don't think it was about her boyfriend actually yeah whatever it was is i think it was he's a five but he's never been told that he should do stand up oh, yeah it's like, that that yeah. thing yeah yeah so um, I said, yeah yeah well, anyway if you are anywhere near vacaville you should go to soul food farm and check it out uh that's my plug for my friend alexa she was like one of my best friends in high school so yeah i'm in touch with a few people christy lynch uh whose name actually got into a conan sketch because we needed an right. irish girl's name so i got christy lynch in there right you um, didn't want to that's my my friend maureen fitzpatrick uh, <laughs> yeah she, she might <laughs> Kathleen Maureen Madigan. Fitzpatrick's a little on the nose when it comes to Irish nose. names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Colleen O'Shea, anything? <laughs> it's, uh, a little bit. So, yeah, no. Uh, so I, I was up in the Bay Area, and then mm-hmm. we, my son and I, brought my son. We brought Charmy, and we made a little vacation. We stayed in San Ramon because surprisingly, San Ramon's kind of high pricey, but they surprisingly had the lowest prices for the weekend for a place where I could bring yeah. a dog. And then we drove up to Brioni's Park, which is in Pleasant Hill, where my dad used to walk all the Pepsis. And we took Charmy out and she ran free. You know, she's usually leashed here. Of yeah, course. yeah. So she had a great time running around the oak trees and stuff. Finally, and, she's um, like, I can really stretch out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I just took my, I always like to drive by my little places and go, okay, that was my middle school. Da, 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 show my son things. And uh, so we had a good time. Northern California, you know, 
uh, it's weird. He's not going to have like many Northern California memories, which is so weird to me because that's, you know, my first uh, 30 years of life, basically. It's so yeah, like, that's like all have, of your childhood. Memories. Yes. Yeah. I have no Kansas memories. And of course that's like imprinted upon my father, like nothing else. So, right. Cause that's where he grew up. Right. Yeah. I, it's, it's good to grow up in a different place than your parents, but also, you know, uh, I guess you miss out on some stuff too. I have no idea, but it was a fun little nostalgic, uh, weekend. And then we drove back this morning and, um, I'm tired and I have two little sets tonight. I Where are you permanent, at? permanent vacation, uh, at permanent records. Right. And then I'm doing a show at, uh, a club called hollywood comedy i haven't been there yet i think it's a oh new it's the room. one on melrose yeah it's yeah. new yeah. yeah so i'm doing a set there nice that's it I, I i look forward to hearing about that i did a bunch of sets last week it was super fun yeah i did and then i did a uh, good heroin last night yeah the stories where i the audience completely on my side not their fault that they didn't laugh at the abortion joke because it doesn't have an end so they didn't yeah. know it was over so uh you told us you're still angry i like it don't let I it am. go jackie oh, i won't and uh so and then i tried that and i forgot my dick joke um but bad, michelle, bad michelle form, balloon, bad form. Yeah. michelle balloon was there <laughs> yeah. michelle balloon had one of the it's such a great uh i've been thinking about i've been trying to write some fiction and um I was like, why don't I just give you the plot of this short story I was going to write to Michelle Balloon because she had a very funny joke about her cat. And um, and then we were talking about it. And I was like, well, I could still write that short story if I, yeah. if I was inspired. Yes. Um, hey, let's take a break. Okay. <gasps> hey, bad. let's do Comic of the Week. Oh, Comic of the Week. All right. The second half of the show at Go Bananas last week. Yep was a Shana Rabini, uh, hilarious. Uh, she's kind of like out of San Diego and Columbus, Ohio. She's splitting her time. So I think she's mostly in Columbus right now working it, you know, those Midwest comics. Oh my God. That is she's grinding. It there's out. a lot of work that's not well paid, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of stage time to be had. Right. It's right. tough, man. It is tough. Um, uh, but she's very funny, you know, great jokes, great writer. And that's uh, how you, that's how you get, that's how you get better. Yeah. And sadly, you also have a day job. Um, yeah. Or yeah. you just live with your folks real low to the ground. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so, so check out uh, what's her, what's, what's her, what's her um, I, what's Instagram, Twitter? I think it's uh, I go by Shana. Oh, I go by Shana. Oh, and Shana is, it's spelled S H A E. Uh, N A Shay. So Shay is S H A E. Uh nice. Rubini. Yeah. Um, I was at the the Barks B, Vince's um Vance Sanders room. Oh, yeah, Barks. Right. And so yeah. Barks. And I kept, I'm like, where's the Barksdale? I couldn't find all it's I remember is Bark. It's the yeah. Barkley. No wonder yeah. I can ever find it. Yeah. I yeah, keep typing Barkley. in the wrong thing. Yeah. So I get there and um I decided to wear my air purifier again. Now I have no idea if this is actually protecting me, uh, but I do know it makes me look like an idiot. <laughs> right. If you're wearing an air purifier around your neck. Yeah. Because it isn't made to be worn. It's made to be put on your desk or something. I mean, it's thick. It's like two bricks and um, yeah, it's so a it's, purse essentially. So yes, it's a little purse around your neck. And <sighs> I was like, as I, you know, I mean, you, but that room is really small at the Barclay. It is small. And there's a woman who sat right up front, even there were, there were two rows that had plenty of seats. And I was like, I kept thinking if this lady has COVID I'm over, it's over. I'm, I have mm -hmm. it. Right. Um, so yeah. So I, I kept it around my neck. It was on. I don't did know. You see I don't Gareth has COVID. COVID? Did. Yeah. Oh, brutal. Um, I mean, here's the thing. People might get in mild cases and stuff, but I, you know, I just, uh, they don't know what the long-term effect of multiple cases of COVID is or thinking it's not going to be good that you might be damaging, uh, T cells permanently that could help you in 10 years when you have something that you could recover from, but because your T cells have been so damaged by COVID, perhaps you won't recover from it. You know what I mean? Right. You sound right. like you don't believe me. 
I'm just well, telling no, you I've, I've what heard, I mean. I've, I've, I don't I've fucking heard know. The, yeah, no, I've heard the stories, and I don't want to get it. I don't want to get it, and I don't want. Right. And I'm I, I'm signed up to go get my um, first shingles vaccine. Well, and, you took your time on that one, lady. Well, I didn't, and then my fourth booster, my four, my okay. second booster, my fourth shot. So, but that's they they can't get me because I'm on the road for the next two weekends uh, in a row. So I. I just packed like so much merch because I'm going, essentially I'm going to Acme in Minneapolis and then I'm going to look at my dad uh, for a couple of days in Milwaukee. And then I'm going to Denver South. And oh, you're doing, you're doing it back to back basically. Yeah. You're kind of, oh, that's a lot of merch to bring. Uh, yeah, I'm doing Denver. I'm doing Denver this week. So, yeah. and the whole country is in an outbreak. Mm-hmm. It's not a good time to be unmasked for five hours in a week. Right. But, you know, I'm what, so I, I pray that my vaccines keep working. Yep. Okay. I've had four. Um, although they say they start to wear off right around now for me and I'm bringing air purifiers for the stage mm-hmm. and maybe between all that, I don't know if I'm going to wear this thing around my neck. It just might be too much for an hour. Yeah. But, but, uh, you, you know, you can put it I on just, the stool and then just lean against the stool and talk over the I stool. I might put it on, I, yeah, I'll put it on the stool, but yeah. you know, it's, I just, if I could just get through, let me just sail through the summer without getting COVID. And then they, they do have another booster in the fall for this version of Omicron. Okay. Ugh, fuck. I'm so tired of thinking about this shit and, and right, plotting right. and worrying and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I can't get COVID because just financially because I really need the money from Montreal, which is the next week. So, yeah. yep, <sighs> yep, That's a lot, lot to think about, lot to think about. And uh, I wiped out the dogs. Uh, I would love to say that it was the dog's fault. It wasn't, but I just I I just took a header, <laughs> scraped up my legs and arms and hands. Oh no, I know, but I lived, and uh, and I was thinking about because. Every, you know, my dad was telling me that my grandmother was always in pain, um, but she never really talked about it. Occasionally she would say, I, why won't I die? Uh, that was- <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> uh, maybe I should save this for the stage. Oh no, right. I want to hear it. Tell me, oh my God. <laughs> I have to write that down. Why won't I? Because uh, Oh my God. But yes. so, so yeah, so the real, but the really, the, the line that my dad told me that my grandmother used to say that made me laugh so hard is, is, and I'm sure he paraphrased it. I will even more paraphrase was that she'd be like, sure, I'm in pain, but at least I'm not being marched through Syria. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, she's like, well, at least I made it. <laughs> so but I do. Why? Why? why I remember her saying, "Why won't I die?" I oh my god! That. So that's great. Wow. So right. you know, some people like your grandmother. Other people that have survived horrific things, and then you and me. Well, no, you've 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 had some horror that you survived as well. I don't know. It just seems it's weird how. I don't know. Life is unfair, Jackie. Well, thank God your grandma lived a long time. Enough, yeah. And she her life was so threatened early on yeah. in her life and she lived so long that she was sick of it i right. mean that's good for that her. is that is literally kind of the good news of it yeah is that she was sick of it and and she did like my grandfather died in like 68 wow and she died i think in the 90s wow so she lived for another 30 odd years single now that to me is the win the ultimate well win. that's what i was gonna say is that <laughs> she was psyched to live alone she was like you know what i can do anything i want yes and uh and she's i could sit there and i could watch wrestling and bold of the beautiful or YNR or whatever the hell she was watching and um and then maybe maybe she was saying why won't i die in 67 and you remember this as a two-year-old <laughs> i don't that is not when uh okay you know the, you know what's sad is uh it's like my grandfather died i think it's 67 or 68 and i have only like one memory of him which is too bad because uh he looked like uh well he was probably a pill but uh he looked like a nice old dude to his grandkids you never know 
Same right? here. My, my dad's dad, who my dad loved, and I, I can only guess was a lot like my dad. So that means I would have loved him, like personality wise. He might have been entirely different, though. You know how like it skips a generation. Sometimes. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, but the one memory I have of him is I was about to do something like touch something that had just been painted. And so he was just trying to protect me from doing that. So he kind of yelled at me. He didn't grab me. He just yelled at me. But that's my only memory of him. Right. I, my only memory guy. Of my, yeah. My memory of my grandfather is him telling me that if I, we were sitting on a bench eating watermelon and him telling me that if I ate the watermelon seeds, there'd be a watermelon in my stomach. <laughs> But I was three. So what but he heck? might have believed that he was from the old country. <laughs> you said that's how we brought these watermelon seeds here. <laughs> we brought them in our poops. Yeah. Um, my memory yeah. of my grandfather is through my father, you know, like yeah. I, through his, 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 how much, like there's a picture of my grandpa that uh, I still have. I don't know what to do with it. It was like a painting mm -hmm. that, um, that my dad, we put up uh, in my dad's hospice room, which was the living room. And he, he looked at it till like, you know, his last second, he would always just look at his dad as sort of like how to center himself in the room. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, it might my be because we put it in the center of the room. Right. I was like, are you sure you didn't just t tap it to like type, <laughs> tape it to the, his glasses? Yeah. My dad talks about his dad. Uh, he's like, he loved the zoo. We would go to the zoo and he would laugh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then he, he had this weird job that when he retired, they had to turn it into like two jobs because no one was willing. I think wow. he worked at the glue factory oh, or wow. the tannery. Like he worked, oh at, it was it was like an Upton Sinclair jungle kind of moment <laughs> oh where I was God. like, what was the job? He's like, oh, it was gross. Wow. And, uh, and, and then he would take the bus in back to uh, back home. And every Friday he would buy a live chicken and then take it on the bus. And then, and then he would kill it. And my grandmother would make chicken on Sunday. Yeah, uh, so. And this happened in America? That's right. It happened wow. right there in rural Wisconsin. Wow. We're surrounded by factories and weird Luxembourgers. <laughs> uh, so an occasional Luxembourger. Yeah. You don't know. You can't know. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, so on this road trip, I did what I, my nightmare, which is I forgot my glasses, which means oh, I no. could only live on one pair of contacts, right? And <sighs> when you clean, you don't wear contacts, right? I used to for okay, decades. Okay, so you, you clean contacts in this this uh, solution called Clear Care, and it kind of fries your contacts. But if you put your contacts in one second too early, your eyes are going to light on fire, right? It, it, it needs eight hours. Wow. And uh, so I was in a position where I'm just, I'm waking up and I can't see anything and I have to wait till the Clear Care is done with my contacts. And I'm like, right. if I was actually on a real road gig, I would be fucked now. And what happens if I lose a contact and I got to drive six hours with my son in the car, only being able to partially see, you know, oh yep. my God, the, the things that could go wrong. So I have to, I'm glad it happened on this trip, I guess, but I really have to always, I have to make a list and make sure I always bring my contact, a, a second pair of contacts and yeah, glasses. You got to bring backup glasses yes. or contacts or something. Because I think, cause I was packing for Charmy. I was just like, so I, I was frazzled. overwhelmed. Yes. Sometimes it sucks being the only adult and you having to do everything, you know? <laughs> yep. It's, mm -hmm. but, and I should be explaining to my son, Hey, you need to do this and this and this, but part of me is like, it's just easier if I get it done or I rather than watch him do it wrong and then have to redo it. And you know what I mean? Right, but that's not, right. in the, he'll, in he'll the learn moment, it in, in his late twenties. He'll figure out how, <laughs> oh my to, God. how to do all of his things. I'm really handing him off to somebody completely unpolished. Yeah. <laughs> He's yours to mold, ladies. <laughs> so, exactly. Teach him how to make his bed. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll, be, he'll be good. I don't know what, I don't know uh, how to even get into this story. I wasn't okay. there. I'm at lunch with a couple of comics. Okay. Okay. And there's a very hipster, cool kid show here in Los Angeles. And it's essentially, you know, the guy invented and created Largo, a guy named Josh Titanato. Okay. Um, he was a mess when he did that. He was just a mess. He was, uh, was, it was grim. Anyway, so, and eventually the show got taken away from him. 
by the powers that be. And then Largo became Largo uh, with comedy and this thing. So this guy runs something comparable to that. And it was his birthday. And so it's a big show, right? There's like Nikki Glaser and there's the Sklar brothers and there's all these people. It's his birthday. So he goes up last. And he's an okay comic from all accounts. I've never seen him. I don't know anything about it, but the set isn't going well. And so he starts talking to the person in the front row. And I actually looked around. I was surprised that there was no video of this. But so the comic who was there told me the story. And I'm, you know, I'm paraphrasing. That's why I'm not saying his name or the name of the show so that we Please, can Please, all... because I want to get booked on this show and I don't, yeah. don't want to be roped in on your negative story. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a hard set. He goes to the crowd. All of, and so he's like, so are you single? And uh, the woman he's talking to clearly says yes, because then he says, well, I've always wanted that wheelchair pussy. Oh, all right. And, he, and then and, and he you know, says, how'd that go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next I, you line never is, know. I mean, you, you know, never the great know thing the... about, oh, it's not anywhere near done. No, I'm just saying you never know the tone of a room. And so a riff can be taken out of context and you don't know. So I'm just saying, I, that's why I was asking, right. how did it go? Right. Okay. Well, yeah, because it could have gone well. I don't know who has good wheelchair pussy material that kills everywhere. But uh, his next line was, you know, the good wheelchair pussy where she can't feel anything down there. So she doesn't know if I'm doing anything right. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then she says... I can feel things down. And he has to repeat it all because the people in the back can't hear him. Oh, God. So, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. And she's like, I can feel uh, things. And he's like, no, you're in a wheelchair. You're paralyzed. Oh, oh, no. Oh, and she's man. like, I have cerebral palsy, you dumb shit. Oh, no. And then he goes, well, and then he says, I guess one or two more lines. And then he says, are you crying? And I guess the next line is, so you're a virgin? What? And Whoa. she goes, yeah, no one will have sex with me because I'm in this wheelchair. And he goes, so you're a virgin? Are you crying? And this is in a 10 minute set. Wow. And then wow. he says, oh, it continues. <laughs> he says, well, I'm going to give you the door. I'm going to give you all the money from the show. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm oh so sorry. God. I'm going to try to make this better. You could have all the money from the show. What's the crowd doing at this point? That's what I'm... Is jaws, it silence? Jaws to the ground. Si oh silence. Oh my God. Dead oh silence. Oh my God. And, and then at the end of his set, he says, and this... This is the only laugh that when I was told the story, I laughed at. I can't believe this happened on my birthday. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, comedy, Jackie. Comedy. Uh, and then after the show, there's a there's a there's a, a tease. There's a I don't know, a, a, a stinger, whatever. He's pushing her around looking for David Spade. I guess he said, I think David's still here. I can introduce you to someone famous. <laughs> so they get up. The, the, oh, oh, he was trying to make it. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm just going to sometimes, you know, your riff goes the wrong way. Right. I have no sentences. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. what you want to take a break? <laughs> Um, uh, sure. All right, we're back. So that does, I mean, here's like, what, whatever, the whole, whole male comic talking to a woman that that's, uh, I, I stop identifying as a comic and start identifying as a woman, right? Like going, uh, what's this happening? I tend happening, to right? identify almost entirely as a human, uh, especially no, when I watching pivot. stand up comic. Yeah, I know. I, you do. I was, that's so why then, I clarified my role. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> But I have like early in my career before early. I realized there were, you know, not everyone's drunk who not everyone slurring is drunk. Yeah. I didn't know that all the time. I didn't know nope. that. I'm sorry. Nope. So a guy, a guy was, I forget if he's heckling. Somehow we were interacting at foo bars 
Yep. And he sounded drunk to my ears. So I started making fun of him for being drunk. You know, I'm slamming him. He can't get a word in. Then I finally stop. And then he explains, I won't do a drunk voice. I won't do his voice, but he said, I'm not drunk. Um, I had a stroke after a car accident. Right. Right. You're right. And We've all done something like Jackie, that. Yes. I offered to give him the door. Uh, you know, it happens. It was, happens. It on your, was it on your birthday? Was it, it on wasn't, your birthday? It wasn't. The bar, the bar should be oh entirely. God. Is it better than offering someone wheelchair pussy? Is, <laughs> will it always be above that? Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Maria tells a story about how she uh, yelled at some woman in the audience who I believe had Parkinson's. And she said, oh, did they let you out of the whorehouse early tonight? I mean, literally, it was some sort of horrible line like that. Ah, Maria and the woman, said that. Bamford. Ah. Bamford. <laughs> and, and she, you know, her heart's in the right place almost 1,100 <laughs> times out of 12. And um, early on in my career, I, uh, I I said a mean. I've I've said mean things. We've all done horrible things. This guy yes. I think is, uh, but that that was in like the first, I would say three years of my 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 act. Right. Yeah. Right. Same here, same here. Yeah. And um, What's I don't think the... it was that way with Maria, but <laughs> she but she narks on herself and well, she was like, "I'm so yeah." Sorry. I mean, yeah. okay. In 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 the case of thinking someone's drunk, it, like it, that is harder to tell, you know, yes. especially if you can't see them and you're just going by the audible, right? Yeah. You know, by people, whatever. Right, right. But when but, you see a person, yeah, that's a little tougher. Uh, I uh, I forget the but the the Key and Peel um sketch where he starts making fun of a guy in a wheelchair. It's so funny. Oh God. It's, it's, I can't remember a single joke from it, but I just remember laughing. They did it well. Okay. Yes, they did it well. Cause it um, can be done well. You just, and, and, oh, sure. am, and plenty and of people have, and plenty of comics have talked very funnily to somebody in wheelchair and, yep. and, uh, and it, everyone leaves the interaction happy. Right. Can be done. Has been done. Yes. Just, just, you have to, you have to be real aware of what you're saying. Yeah, you, it, a it's, a, it's a learned skill. Yes. So I do say this though, if you have a joke about wheelchairs or about the blind or about uh, people of color, and you're unwilling to do it in front of those people, do not do that joke. That has always been my opinion. I was like, if, if it cannot stand up to the scrutiny of the, of the people you're joking about, Sure. Think, think about the joke harder. Really, why aren't you willing to do the joke in front of them? Is it because it's too mean? Is it because it isn't funny enough? Because that's usually why. Because <laughs> right. it's too right, mean right, and right. it's not funny enough. Right. So keep writing. Keep writing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, but when you are in a riffing situation, so you're, you're uh, relying on your wits, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> material that you've honed and stuff like that it's 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 you know that's a dicey it's a crap shoot yeah that's a dicey pond and sometimes, to jump into. especially if you can't hold on to your temper right you ever get so right. mad up there where you're just so mad because you're like i can't the, the 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 you know and this is on the road more than in an la situation or a new york situation but if if the if the room isn't policing the room and yeah. sometimes it'll make me so mad that I'll have to literally <laughs> physically move to get out of that place in my head and breathe and then think about what I really want to do with that. You know, what yeah. do I want to say to those people? What do I want to, how do I want to react? Here's something to remember, to think about if you are, cause this happened at Go Bananas. I, uh, and, but it was, I, I made it funny, of course, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I asked I asked a woman why why somehow she, she's with a guy and I'm like so you know where's the other where's your first one so like some she had done something like he was second one right so I okay. said where's the first one and she was like he died <gasps> right and so but that can be very funny especially yep. when the person offers up the information yep. right but here's just a thing to remember if you're talking if you a comic are talking to somebody who's probably 50 or older 
you know, you're going to have a high chance that the reason they're dating someone now is their partner died, right? Yep. Just be ready for it. That's all. You know? <laughs> right. If you start it's talking when to you, people, you start poking around when they get, we're older and you start asking why people aren't there, why someone's not there. It's might be because they died. Right. Right. Yeah. I, uh, my suicide chunk, did you see that they changed the suicide hotline to just nine, eight, eight? What was it before? Uh, it was a long telephone number oh, that really? you had to okay. memorize. And I have been doing this line about how I don't know the number for the suicide hotline, but now. Oh, now you're fucked. Now I'm fucked. Now I could just go, I guess you could just call 988. This is um, where you have to ask, are the lives saved by shortening the number <laughs> worth the fact that you just lost a joke? I don't know, Jackie. That's such a, uh, it's a dilemma. Teetering, teetering, it's teetering. It's the headliner's dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that book? So I, I can't wait to, to, to go quite honestly to Acme and at Comedy Works to work on all of these new jokes because I've got like five or six new premises and there's there's a, there's punchlines. Some of them don't have ends, but they they will mm-hmm. really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, hoping I wanna... not to get COVID, but uh, yeah, yeah, same same here. I'm uh, I'm excited to go to Comedy Works. I'm there right before you. So our Denver friends, um, you have two obligations this month, all right? <laughs> yeah. You got to see yeah. me. And then the next week you go see Jackie. Wear a mask, mask up. On my mask shows, up. we're going to have some air purifiers going, all right? So mm-hmm. you can sit close to me and uh, I will be blasting all of our aerosols and turning them right. into healthy air. I'm um, planning on uh, COVID is killed by a mixture of Diet Coke and cranberry juice. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> if you drink a DC... Cram. I think I read that on Facebook. Actually, I think I did read that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DC Cran, it fixes everything. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, there's a large bug on my screen. Ugh. This is the time of large bugs. Yeah, that's that's where we are in the podcast. What does that mean? Uh, time Hold wise, on. Kyle, I got Kyle new- Clark. Yeah, I have two something. more minutes. Wait, okay, great. All right, hold on. So I was, uh, so Emily Heller has been posting, I would say even bragging about her caterpillars on her milkweed nonstop on Twitter. <laughs> and so some, I forgot how I brought it up in some interaction we were having. And it turns out I had the wrong milkweeds, right? I, oh. I have some like toxic milkweeds. So <gasps> I went, she recommended to go to this place called the Theodore Payne Center. And I went there and I bought a bunch of milkweeds. I, I bought the right ones. This is just a couple of days ago. So uh, I'm going to go check on, uh, on them as soon as our podcast is over. Cause I just realized I haven't looked at them in three days because I was out. I- I have a lot of tomatoes. If you, if anybody wants garden tomatoes, uh, gotta drive. Well, if you leave it open to everyone, I'm sure. Uh, well, I'm leaving town. So, uh, so when you hear this on Monday, if you have my phone number, see if it could happen. You know what? I, <laughs> I, I asked 800 pounds about when we're getting our money from album September. sales, September yeah. 30th. End of September. Yeah. Very end. Uh-huh. Yeah. It turns out I'm just going to keep working. Uh, yeah. The, the guy who told me that I was going to make $2 million, I said, I don't know that I need $2 million. It's not that I don't want $2 million, but I would just like my four grand a month back. How about that? Oh, hey, transparency. she said a number. I said nice. a number. Who doesn't love transparency? On a really good month, I was making about four grand a month on five Damn. albums. So right. nothing wrong with that, but Damn. not not now. Not now. Now I'm making about 1200 so um, it just means that I just got to work harder. And this was my attitude when Ronald Reagan was made president. Oh, yeah. And you just have to work, work harder, Jackie. Yeah. You have two podcasts. You're on the road all the time. Just work harder, Jackie. Just a little bit harder, Cation. And then fall over <sighs> in a heap when you hit 57. Uh, <laughs> my role model. 